Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter and these are the Nisi Athena Cinema Prime lenses. In my opinion, these are end game lenses. You could purchase these and be absolutely thrilled with them for a very long time. And as we'll see, they massively outperform a lot of other cinema lenses that we've been using when it comes to budget options. And there's really four reasons I think these are just outstanding and totally worth your consideration if you're trying to pick up a set of lenses. These these include speed, size, price, and performance. We're gonna get into all of that in this video, but first a disclaimer. I saw these lenses at NAB 2023, reached out to Nisi and said, hey, I wanna check these out. So they were cool enough to send me a set for this review. They are not sponsoring this video and they have no idea what I'm saying in this review. That said, this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guide, LUTs and camera gear. Check the links in the description to learn more and thank you guys so much for the support. Okay, so let's talk about these lenses. At launch and currently there are five focal lengths available, including the 14 millimeter, 25, 35, 50, and 85. I asked Nisi and they said they do have a 135 coming next year, which is really exciting. Earlier I said one of the things that really make these stand out is the speed. So we're looking at T 1.9 for these lenses with exception to the 14 millimeter, which is T 2.4. And then the maximum aperture is going to be T 22. That lens aside, the rest are T 1.9, which is a massive leg up. Not only are they fast, but they're also really great when it comes to coverage. So these are full frame or Vista vision lenses. So you can use them with pretty much any camera. And that brings me to the mounts. I opted to check out PL mount versions of these lenses, but there are several other mounts also available, including Canon RF, Sony E, L mount, and if that wasn't enough, there's also going to be different versions of these lenses with different filter options. So again, the units I have here are PL, and there is going to be a way to add filters to the rear of the lenses, which is fantastic allowing you to add things like ND or other special effects filters to these. That said, if you opt for the mirrorless mounts like E or RF, etc., there is going to be an option of these lenses that has a drop in or slide in filter where you can get a clear filter or a ton of different options from Nisi. This really opens these up to being really nice run and gun options for those who don't want to use a matte box or filtration in front of their glass. And if you're going with an E mount version of these lenses, you have two choices available. You can go with the drop in filtered version or if you just want a really nice weather sealed lens, you can get it without the filter tray, which is just so many fantastic options to have when purchasing. I love the PL mount because you can adapt it to pretty much anything, but the one thing you do need to keep in mind is that these protrude pretty far off of the back of the lens. So you're not really going to be able to use these with a lot of adapters that'll have, you know, a speed booster in them or some kind of filtration inside of the PL adapter. So keep that in mind. You'll need to use a basic adapter and Nisi will be selling those as well. Well, so we talked about speed and how that's such a big deal, but another one is going to be size. These things are absolutely tiny. They're all roughly the same size and weight, which is fantastic if you're going to be using these with a gimbal. And for context, I'm coming from a set of these Mikey cinema lenses, uh, which I've really enjoyed, but they're significantly larger, or at the very least, somewhat larger, but they are slower at T2.1. Not only are you getting more performance, but you're also saving on the size of the lens. You also get all of the stuff we love about cinema lenses. All of the gears line up in the same position. We have markings on both sides of the lenses. The lenses also look really nice. So we have high visibility paint in kind of a glow in the dark yellow with white accents. The lenses come with really nice front lens caps with a nice felt on the inside that slide over the lenses and they work great. If you go with the PL option of the lenses, they also come with really nice PL caps. And if you go for the full set, there is a really nice case to keep everything nice and organized, albeit a little loose fitting. So I wish it was a little tighter so the lenses didn't flop around as much. Front diameter on these lenses is going to be 80 millimeters. And then there's also a built-in thread of 77 millimeters. So you can use traditional, you know, round filters on these. I was about to say you can't thread on filters on the 14 millimeter, but I just found out that you absolutely can. So if you look at this, I've just threaded on an ND filter, even though this thing has a hood, 
Uh, what's hilarious is you now have these gaps here, and I bet you're going to get some vignetting, but you could, in theory, use some kind of gaff tape to seal those gaps and get ND on this thing, even though it's really not designed for that, but they did actually machine in the threads, which is amazing. The third thing I said I loved about these lenses was the price you're sitting at, depending on where you buy them, around $1,000 a lens. But for an entire set, you're at around $5,000, which compared to other options on the market is actually less and more affordable. So that's just fantastic. You're getting a faster lens that is smaller, and as we'll see in a little bit, performs way better than a lot of stuff that we've been using on the budget end, and it's going to cost less. So it just seems like a complete slam dunk, and I don't know what else to say about that. So with speed, size, and price covered, let's talk about the fourth reason I think these are end game lenses, and that is performance. Not only are they smaller, faster, cheaper, with a filtration option, but they're also just better lenses. I did a video where I took a set of these Mikey lenses, which at the time I thought was the best budget option, and I compared them to Canon C and E lenses, which are much more expensive. My conclusion in that video was that the Mikey lenses are incredible value for what they were, but those Canon lenses beat them out in one clear category, and that was color. These lenses just weren't very consistent, so when you would switch focal lengths, your color would be slightly different, and that's not really fun when you're switching lenses or if you have two cameras using the set. These lenses, however, completely spank the Mikey lenses, but they also are better in most other categories. Here is some test footage from that video where I was looking at those Mikey lenses. And one issue I was consistently having with the Mikeys and the Canons was chromatic aberration around the edges of bokeh. Almost all of those lenses had really, really sharp red, magenta, or green fringing, whereas that is almost non-existent on these lenses. And I will say I have noticed that the 25 and especially the 35 are the weakest in this set, with the 35 being the weakest. But I noticed at worst it was on par with the Mikeys, uh, with exception to color. These all have almost identical colors. So here you can see a color chart across all the lenses. When you look at a vector scope, they're all landing exactly at the same spot, which is fantastic to see. But not only was color good, chromatic aberration was also so much better on these lenses, with some of them being almost completely non-existent. So for those who don't know what that is, that is the kind of magenta or green that you'll often see before and after your focus point, and you'll usually see it in high contrast scenarios like this. If we look at these lenses compared to the Mikeys, you can see there's a drastic difference. And I did notice that some of these are just fantastic. So the 14 millimeter, the 50 and 85, really, really nice. There's a little more issues on the 35 and 25, but again, at worst, they were on par with the Mikeys. When it comes to focus breathing, there's pretty much no issues. Distortion is also really controlled across all the lenses, and the 14 is really, really impressive. That's crazy wide on full frame, yet it doesn't distort that bad. And it has a really nice close focus or minimum focus distance, so you can get very close to your subject, which I love to see. If you need to get closer, Mikey is also going to be offering a diopter that you can purchase separately to go in front of the lens to get you even closer to your subject and get a better minimum focus. Sharpness is outstanding on these lenses. And then we have bokeh, which I found very interesting on these lenses. The first thing I noticed was that while they do have cutting wide open, uh, especially in the corners of the frame, this was pretty controlled and very easy to get back to a round bokeh by stopping the lens down to usually uh, T 2.8 or T 4 at most. Compared to my Mikey lenses, which had a lot more cutting, and those Canon lenses had some really wild artifacts, and you can check that video out if you're interested. They also have really nice soft bokeh, which is very rare for budget cinema lenses. Usually we get really sharp bokeh. These are nice and soft, which is just so fun to see. Again, with exception to the 25 and 35, which have a little more sharp of a bokeh. And I noticed the 35 in particular has some chromatic aberration around its bokeh wide open, whereas the other lenses are just super clean. And another thing I noticed is something that's really hard to describe, but uh, according to the internet, this is called micro contrast. And in short, the contrast on these lenses is super interesting. So usually when you think contrast, you think the you know highlights and the shadows, the difference between the two, but the depth of color and 
it's again, hard to describe, but when I looked at footage with these lenses compared to other lenses, the image and colors just were loaded with information. And it kind of felt like I was bringing up the saturation without ever doing that digitally in post-production. If you wanna see footage from these lenses, check out my video doc project where I used these. And you should notice in that video, when I switched from the kind of dark set to my lighter tabletop set, there's a big difference and the image just starts to look thin over with that Sigma zoom lens compared to these primes. So overall image quality is outstanding. And that brings me to the look of these lenses. So far to date, budget primes like these Mikeys, like the Vespids and all kinds of other options on the market have been a vintage look, which I think is, I don't wanna get in trouble for saying this, but I kind of feel like that kind of marketing is a nice way to say they're just not terribly good lenses. Now, don't get me wrong. There's something about lenses that aren't perfect that looks really good and we like that look. But there are things like chromatic aberration that we would all love to just eliminate. These lenses are the first ones I've seen in a while that are just clean. Sure, they're not perfect. You're still gonna get some funky bokeh stuff in the corners. And the 35 has some chromatic aberration, but these are just really clean, which for me personally is something I really appreciate because I can make these look really old or vintage or, you know, have character. And I prefer to do that myself and have control over that compared to something where it's just what you get no matter what. As an example, here's a shot with the Nisi 50 millimeter. It looks super clean, low chromatic aberration. It is sharp as all get out and high contrast. I'd rather have this image and be able to add something like this smoke filter to add some more character and have control over it versus a lens where no matter what, you're going to have some of those issues or character and you have no control over it. By the way, stay tuned for a future video where we're gonna talk about filtration and taking lenses like this and adding your own character and customizing your own look. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so you don't wanna miss out on that. All right, so all of that is great. Let's talk about some cons with these lenses. The first one is going to be the focal lengths available. Mikey and uh, other companies like the Vespid Primes have so many focal lengths available. And that's really a weak point with these sets right now. You're stuck with just five lenses. Now they have one more coming next year and hopefully they'll have even more added to the list, but there's just fewer focal lengths, which is kind of a bummer, but that's what we have to deal with. The next is going to have to be the 35 millimeter. While it is at least on par with what I've used to when it comes to budget lenses, I wish it more closely matched the other lenses in this set. It just kind of sticks out because it doesn't perform as well as the other lenses. Don't get me wrong, I still love using it. Uh, it's just when you use the 14 or the 50 or 85, and then you see that lack of chromatic aberration and switch to the 35, it just doesn't feel like it's quite there. Maybe someday Nisi can have a Mark II of this focal length and maybe even the 25 where they just kind of get them to the same level as the rest of the lenses. But as it stands, the 35 doesn't have quite the image quality performance as the rest. Now, don't get me wrong, color is still amazing and it's going to cut beautifully with the rest of these lenses. But when it comes to chromatic aberration in particular and even some sharpness, it's just not quite there. The other con or really a compromise with these lenses is the style of mount. So these are designed for mirrorless cameras and PL cameras. So while you can use them with just about anything, especially these PL mounts, you won't be able to use them with every single adapter out there. The other con, at least right now, is going to be availability. These are really hard to get your hands on. Uh, I think they're incredibly popular. I'm seeing a lot of people get their hands on them uh, and use them. So they're harder to get a hold of. Hopefully uh, production blows up and they can really stay on top of orders. But from what I'm seeing online, they're just really hard to get a hold of, at least if you want an entire set. But that's gonna wrap up this video on these Athena lenses. They're just a fantastic, in my opinion, end game option right now. For those of us on a budget looking at that kind of $1,000 per lens cinema range. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you in the next video.